Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. I think I'll just get this little video in before I head off to work for the night. The joys. Anyway, what I thought I would do this time is to yet another ranking video. Surprise, surprise. But this time I thought I would do a singles ranking video. So what I want for this video I've decided to rank the singles of the jam. Paul Weller's group from 1977 to 1982 and the first band to break my heart whenever they broke up even though I didn't get into the jam until about 1981, the start of 81 when I bought about six singles off a friend of my brother's for about two pounds and I only bought them because Going Underground was in it and I loved Going Underground but those six singles blew me away and then I just went mad with the jam. So. I'm going to rank 18 singles. I am going to include the two import singles, which were hits in the UK, but I'm not going to include the live EP that you got with the snap set in 1983. So anyway, coming in at number 18 is, excuse me, my eye here, is their final single, Beat Surrender. Um, I think this is actually quite a poor effort. Uh, especially as a final single. I know that it was a toss-up between this and A Solid Bond In Your Heart to be released as the last single. They went with this and in a way I'm glad they went with this because the Style Council did their own version of Solid Bond In Your Heart and if you compare it to the, the demo version of the jam the Style Council version blows it away. It's it's poor. It's, it's not that bad. I think the, the verses are better than the chorus um, I think the courses are a bit sort of sloppy. Come on, boy, come on, girls, so come to the beat, surrender. And um, it's just, no, I think Paul Weller was better than that. But the, yeah, you can you can tell also that he was getting a little bit more soulful in the way the jam were going. So that's number eighteen. Got to number one on the chart straight in. Well, no surprise because at that time the jam were gold. Number seventeen. This is News of the World. This is the Bruce Foxton pen number. It's alright. It's not a great song. The best part of this single is actually Paul Weller's guitar by a mile. The B side of this is Aunties and Uncles, which is uh, it's a charming little number by Weller. It's inoffensive. But the other B side, Innocent Man, would probably be a contender for one of the worst songs that the jam ever recorded, and it's a Bruce Foxton song. Sorry, but Bruce Foxton wasn't the best songwriter in the world, and also he's not the best singer. So this is News of the World number 17. This got to number 27 in the charts. Number 16, I'll go with All Around the World. This is their second single. I used to love this when I was a kid, even though I'd never bought it. I loved it, but whenever I did actually buy it, about 1982-83, it didn't impress me as much as it did whenever I was young. Don't know why, just didn't. This was the biggest hit up to that date. That was, well, it was only their second single, but it got to number 13. It's not bad, it's a bouncy number. Um, it's more with the In The City type sound. And even with the sleeve, you can see that they're wearing their suits. The B-side Carnaby Street is another Bruce Foxy number, which it was okay, but not brilliant. Uh, number 15, I'm going to go with The Bitterest Pill I Ever Had to Swallow from 82. This was their penultimate single. It's good, but it just doesn't sound like the jam. And I think the drums are too jammy in this to make this song work. I think this would have been better as a style council single than a jam single, I think. They seem a little bit awkward in this, but it's still not a bad song. Um, anything from now on is good, actually. Uh, the B side of this is Pretty Poor Alfie, which is great. I think it might have been a better choice of a single. And it moves in with, uh, blends into Peggy Lee's Fever, which is excellent. Yeah, this would be number 15, and it's got number 2 in the charts. Okay, number 14 is the first of the import songs, and this is From the Gift. This is Just Two as a Five O'Clock Hero. I think this is a Dutch pressing. And this actually got to number seven, no, number eight on the UK charts without ever being released. 
yeah, it's, it's an obvious choice of a single after the Town Called Malice Precious single. It's good, it's not bad. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. And the B side is The Great Depression, which is an old, also another very, very good song. Maybe not A side quality, but um, certainly a decent enough B side. War is also on this, which I don't overly rate. You know, that war. Ooh. War is a good thing. That one. I can't remember who did that. Was it Curtis Mayfield or somebody? Not sure. Anyway, so that's number uh, 14. Number 13 from 1981 is Absolute Beginners. Got to number 4. The, the A side I love, although I admit it's awkward. It's full horns and it just feels awkward. It feels as if they struggle to piece this one together. But as I say, I love it for what it is. The B-side of this is excellent. It's called Tales of the Riverbank. Um, many think it should have been the A-side. I don't agree. I still think Absolute Beginners is the better A-side. Maybe a double A-side. But yeah, I really enjoy this. This is a non-album track. In fact, half of the jam singles never actually appeared on albums, which is a great, great for the fan, to be honest with you, because it just showed that... Um, I just love it whenever bands do, like T-Rex did that, Slade did that, The Beatles did that, Stones did that, well, not from the 70s onwards they didn't, but to give songs just as singles I think it was, it was great. Okay, number 12, their third single, This Is The Modern World. Yeah, this is another punk type song. This one here, the single, maybe I'm becoming an old fuddy-duddy, but in this one they, um, they sing I Don't Give a Damn About Your Review, but on the LP version they sing I Don't Give Two Fs About Your Review. I prefer this. Don't know why. Just think it works better sometimes. The swearing. Sometimes swearing in songs, yes, is effective, but sometimes I think it's just unnecessary. But... You could tell that Weller was very soulful because the live B-sides uh, feature sweet soul music. Is that Sam and Dave or Arthur Connolly? Um, Back in my arms again, which was Supremes and punked up versions of them. But yes, this is a good single and I do like the live B-sides. So, number 11 and we have Start, which is a complete rip-off of Taxman from the Beatles, which everybody knows is a complete rip-off, so there's no surprise there. Um, I still love it though, and Liza Radley, the acoustic B-side, is brilliant. This got the number one on the charts. The Modern World, by the way, got to number 36, I forgot to say, but this got the number one in 1980, um, and it's on the sound effects album. Number 10, and another number 1 is A Town Called Malice, Double A Side with Precious from The Gift in 1982. Town Called Malice does borrow heavily from You Can't Hurry Love by The Supremes. Precious, I think, borrows heavily from uh, Pig Bags, Papa's Got a Brand New Pig Bag. But in saying that, it's a great single, straight in at number 1, and infamous, infamously kept Golden Brown by The Stranglers off the of number 1 position. So, yeah. This is my number 10, Town Called Malice. And you can see that it's like where he was going because it was very soul influenced and the state council was really only around the corner. Okay, um, number nine, the second import single, although this here is the 1983 British reissue and that's entertainment from um, Sound Effects. Acoustic song, great storytelling song. I really do like it. Very simple, but very effective. Um, I, I tend to get a little bit fed up with this down again, so sometimes I, I leave it for a long time before I listen to it, but then it just jumps right back at me. So, yeah, this is number 9, and it's got to number 21 on import. Number 8 is from 1981. This is Funeral Pyre. This is uh, Straight Ahead Power Pop a la setting songs type. This is almost like a step back for them after sound effects. Maybe as close as song as sound effects would, to this would be uh, Set the House Ablaze. But yeah, this is in your face. Um, this also is I think the only one that's ever credited musically to the whole three members. 
and the B side of this is a very good version of Who's Disguises, which itself was, a, I believe, a B side of one of their 60s songs. So, yeah, Funeral Pyre, great video for this as well, number eight. It got to number four on the charts. Number seven, Strange Town, got to number 15 in 1979. Uh, this is a tale of feeling alienated in a new city, a new town. Great song, brilliant B-side, The Butterfly Collector, which is a fan's favourite. As I say, got to number 15 and was the start of, really, a glory, well, yeah, more or less the start, maybe if the one before that was the start of a glory jam period for me. So, yeah, and number 15, Strange Town, great song. Slight, um, almost, not reggae, tinge to it but there's a slightly different sound to this as well. I believe this was on the US version of Setting Sons, it wasn't on the UK but it's a great song. Uh, number 6 and this got to 25 and this is David Watson, A Bomb on Water Street, the uh, AA side. I'm giving this uh, so high up because of A Bomb on Water Street. I'm not overly keen on the jams version of David Watts partially because I wish Paul Weller had a song and not Bruce Foxton because Weller's a much better singer. But A-Bomb and Water Street, um, it's not A-Bomb, it's A-Bomb as an atomic bomb. I think some people do get confused with that. But yeah, it's a fantastic, it's a real, it's a bouncy number, it's a real pogo number this one. Uh, it's part of the old more concept and it's absolutely brilliant and I've got to only 25 in the charts. Which leaves us in the top five. And number five, I'll go with the debut in the city with a fantastic descending uh, guitar riff, which um, Steve Jones obviously nicked for Holidays in the Sun. In the city, number 40, debut single, brilliant. Um, about two and a half, or slightly over two minutes of just in your face. Punk rock, really. It is punk with a tiny, tiny little bit of soul, but it's mostly punk. Well, sleeve up there is a pure 1977 sleeve, brilliant. So in the city, number five on my list. N number four on my list is the bit, the first really big hit. This is Eaton Rifles in '79, got to number three, and this blew them up in Britain. This is um, everything after this once rocketed sky high. This is from Setting Suns. Number three, as I say in the charts, great B-side and Seesaw, but um, this is almost like the Class War, Weller Class War song. Brilliant, it really is, um, catchy as hell, and deservedly got a really high chart position. So that's my number four, which leaves number three, also from 79, and the one that preceded it, When You're Young. I love this. Um, I, this here just flows so well to me. In fact, really, it, it's the sort of song that shouldn't work because it's got the, the rallying chant of whoa, whoa throughout it, which normally I don't like, but it really works so well for me, and I just adore the song. The B-side is Smithers Jones, the electric version, which should really have been on the Setting Suns album, but they put the, um, the orchestrated version on the album. I think it would have been better if it had been on the single, but... I know that's just me, but I absolutely love this song and this gets my number three. Number two jam single and straight in at number one in 1980 is Going Underground. Um, the B side of this is uh, uh, Dreams of Children. A lot of people think it's the A side, a double A side. It's not, it's a B side. It may have intended to be the double A side, but I have never seen a copy on, on record of this single that says Dreams of Children side A. It's always been side B. Uh, going underground, as I say, straight in at number one in the UK charts in 1980. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant song and one of the best singles of 1980 and even the early part of the 80s. I love it. Which leaves number one and the best jam single and this is a masterpiece and you all know what it is if you're a jam fan. And it's down in the tube station at midnight from All Mod Cons in 1978. Um, in 1978 Paul Weller was struggling to write for his third album. Um, this here 
Features on the B-side, So Sad About Us, which is another Who cover, and a song, The Night, by Bruce Foxton. Now, Bruce Foxton did, God bless his heart, um, hand in some songs for the third album because Weller was struggling. The, uh, the Night, the, they were rejected. The Night was one of them, and you can see why they were rejected, because The Night is pretty crap, to be quite honest with you. Down in the tube station, and it must have just clicked with them, because this is a tale of... Uh, a fella going home after work, picking up a takeaway for the wife and a bottle of wine, going down to the tube station to get home and getting his head kicked in. Brilliant song. I remember when I was 16 in one of our classes at school, it was religious education class, and they asked um, everyone one week to bring in a song so we could analyse it. Um, home taping is killing music. So anyway, I taped the song and this is the one I taped. And um, we all talked about it, and even maybe it's not so cool, but the RE teacher thought it was a pretty good effort. And I thought, yeah. And then I walked out of the class and thought, oh heck, my RE teacher thinks the charm are cool. Oh dear. But anyway, this is the number one. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant song. So that's my ranking of the Jams 18 singles. I hope you enjoyed that. And to get all those 18 singles in vinyl, you just buy the Snap LP. It's got them all on it, plus more. Um, although on the Snap LP, you don't get the single version of That's Entertainment. You get a, sort of a live, more acoustic version without a bass in it. I think it's just the acoustic guitar. But anyway, it's still good. So hope you enjoyed that and until the next time I'll say it. Bye.